Hey ladies and gentlemen, I want to talk to you a little bit today about climate and climate patterns and I want to go back to what we had left off with which are um, convection current circulation patterns caused by uneven heating of the earth from the sun. So last time I was trying to explain that and we talked about that the most intense radiation from the sun comes in near the equator so the ground near the equator heats up the most because of that the hot air rises as it rises it moves out and expands and it cools and it sinks back down at about 30 degrees north or south of the equator remember we said this was important for understanding climate as the hot air forms over the equator it absorbs lots of moisture as it rises it forms lots of clouds and lots of rain so you have rainy areas in the tropics as it cools and moves away it loses its moisture so now it's drier and it comes back down and it gets compressed and it's heated so now you have hot dry air so you tend to have deserts about 30 degrees from the equator now if it doesn't go there the air goes back the other way and is heated as it moves over the ground once it gets heated it rises as it rises it cools and it forms moisture so you tend to get lots of rain. So this is where the temperate rainforest is. Think Washington State or uh, England, places where you get lots of rain on a regular basis. And again, forms different convection patterns. So where we had left off, we said that in the tropics, the wind predominantly blows toward the equator. In the temperate regions, between 30 and 60 degrees, the wind predominantly blows toward the poles. And then in the polar regions, the wind blows away from the poles. So we have these different convection patterns. Now, if you think a little bit about our weather, though, think about where our wind usually comes from. Our wind usually is blowing from south to north, but it's not straight south to north. It's usually also coming from the west and going toward the east. Our wind comes from Alabama and goes toward South Carolina. So we have... Um, a wind pattern that's not reflected by just these convection currents. So to understand that, I'm going to introduce an idea called the Coriolis effect. Now, the Coriolis effect is an effect of a moving reference frame. So here we have a globe, and we know that the Earth rotates on its axis. So the globe is moving. Now, the atmosphere, the air, is above the globe, and by and large, it moves along with the globe. It's dragged along with the globe because of friction in the atmosphere. I want you to notice, though, that as the Earth moves in a circle, the equator has to go a greater distance than the poles. So the equator is moving faster than the polar regions. Now, that means that the air near the equator is moving faster than the air away from the equator. The air away from the equator is moving fast, slower than the air closer to the equator. So how does that affect the wind? Well, here we've already seen by the convection pattern that in the tropics, the wind is blowing toward the equator. However, the equator is moving faster than the region above it. So the equator outruns the air above it. So this makes the air fall behind, so to speak. So it causes the wind to blow from the east back to the west. We call these easterlies. Notice this is the opposite pattern of what we experience in our temperate region. Our wind tends to blow to the northeast. So it comes uh, from the west, so we call it a westerly, but it blows toward the northeast. It blows from Alabama to South Carolina. Why is that? Well, it's still the Coriolis effect. So here as the earth is turning, this part of the earth, closer to the pole, is moving faster than that part of the earth, which means this part of the air is moving faster than that part of the air. So as it moves north, since this air is already moving faster, it outruns, so to speak, the ground beneath, and it causes a wind pattern to blow from the east, or from the west to the east. So we have a westerly wind. Again, the pattern is reversed when you go to the polar region because the convection cycle is reversed. Want to make sure that you understand that. We're going to end up using these predominant wind patterns to explain ocean currents. Um, we're going to use those then to relate it to some weather phenomenon that you need to understand and some climate uh, 
phenomenon that you need to understand. So to summarize, we have the convection patterns set up by the uneven heating of the earth. The hot air rises and cools, forms a convection cycle. If the air goes the other way, it's warmed back over the earth. The hot air rises and cools, forms a convection cycle. So the convection cycle in the tropics blows toward the equator near the ground. In the temperate region, it blows away from the equator. In the polar region, it blows away from the pole. Because the earth is turning and turning at an uneven rate, faster at the equator, slower at the pole, it makes the wind move at an uneven rate, the air move at an uneven rate, and as it moves from north to south, that causes a wind. So we, in the temperate region, we get a westerly wind, a wind coming from the west going to the east. And then that pattern is reversed in the tropics and the poles.